Each soul has the same purpose, that is to wake up fully from separation from God. Yet within the dream in space and time, based on soul experiences and predilections, do we have our own unique purpose? No. Do you want an elucidation? Or is that sufficient? That's sufficient. You are the one to tell me to ask this question. Indeed. Beloved friend, this is a question that actually serves to, it brings up into the, our awareness something that really serves to limit the awakening process itself. The ego places value on form more than content. The egoic mind searches for a form of expression which it hopes will fulfill its perceived purpose and thereby grant it what it wants. Ah, I have done it. See how good I am? Hmm? The only purpose of the soul is to awaken, to allow the transformative process to occur so that Christ again reigns supreme in a mind where fear had created a substitute. Hmm? Content is what matters. And the more any mind devotes itself to content, the appropriate forms merely materialize for it. Why? Because the universe or the world you experience is nothing more than an outpicturing of the love of God that is working through the Holy Spirit to create the contexts that allow you to awaken and, as we said earlier, to give you context in which you can become more and more skilled as a conduit for the extension of love. Uniqueness, once again, is an ego interpretation. For instance, there is nothing unique about me showing up as the primary spokesperson for that which I have once referred to as the lineage. There is nothing unique about this, my beloved brother, uh, who joins with me in this process. It may look unique to some minds, and some may say that, oh, Joshua, what he's doing is so unique among all the masters. That is a projection. All things have one function, the healing of the sonship, so that love can be extended sanely from the mind of God through his creation, who is Christ. That's all. You could see those things as two sides of one coin. There's nothing unique in what I do. There is nothing unique in what you do. It only appears that you're in a different place, in a different dimension, and the actions of the body make you think that what you're doing is unique or different from somebody else's function. The ego compares itself to others. It measures its worthiness by thinking about everybody else's function. It does not see that it is merely projecting its own value onto what everybody else is doing. Only one thing is occurring mind is waking up. To give you a picture that would help you in this, imagine that one baby lays its head down on a pillow in its crib and begins to dream. And part of that dream becomes the process of its own wakefulness as the first rays of dawn begin to touch the crib through the open window. Hmm? One baby, all by itself, resting in a crib, dreaming a dream, and then stirring itself to wakefulness. Hmm? 
the sonship is that one baby, and you participate perfectly within it. Body minds, notwithstanding, they do come and go, of course. It looks like there's a multiplicity, but there is only mind, and it is mind that is waking. One purpose. How can you find uniqueness when there's only one baby in the process of doing one thing? Awakening. Giving up dreams. Stepping back into the wakefulness of reality. Therefore, to all of you, I want very much to encourage you to be very aware and very wary of the tendency within the mind to become attracted to what looks like a unique function. And the pictures that the mind gets, the fantasies that it creates about becoming a great president, about becoming a great anything, that is always secondary, and it is the ego that does those things. The mind that is informed by love is merely available awake, or it happens to find itself doing what it happens to be doing. And it sees clearly that all power under heaven and earth is flowing through it and is available in that moment to serve the one function of the healing and restoration of the sonship. Where the body-mind happens to find itself is only secondarily of importance. Hmm? Does that help you in that regard? Yes. Could you please elaborate on lineage and how one comes to be in your lineage and speak of soul groups? Indeed, first of all, beloved friend, if we approve of you, <laughs> you might be allowed in. Yeah. This could indeed encompass an entire hour or several hours in itself, since it is a question that deals with the very heart of the dream of separation and the process of the baby's awakening in the crib. Within the dream itself, and we've used this analogy for you before, imagine that there is a light, a singular light that occupies all of space. You might think of it as a star that fills all of space. So there's only the light of the star. For some inextricable and unseen reason, that star bursts into many, many starlets, if you will many points of light that now look as though there's a multitude, but they're all made of the same substance, light. Each one of them, as that process begins, begins to see itself as unique and separate from the other aspects of the star that has burst. Each one of them then begins to set in motion a vibration that looks like it begins to carry it into different corners of the universe. Different experiences begin to flow out of it. So different vibratory rates are established, would be one way of saying it. And yet they're really all occurring within the context of the one star. And there, if there had not been that one star, none of the little points of light could have any existence whatsoever. They are embraced by the vibratory field of the one star. They never lose touch with that. They merely express what appears to be variations on a central theme. Hmm. Now, as that process continues, eventually, time is birthed. Think about that sentence for a while. Eventually, Time is birthed within the dream. And with time comes space. And with space comes bodies. But bodies are first merely condensations of energy, far subtler than what your scientists know as atoms or quarks. Mm -hmm. And yet, 
they emerge as the vibrations continue to create out of the belief of uniqueness that which coalesces thought as a vibrating energy called an atom. And atoms coalesce into a multitude of forms, as you well know, since you are one. You are coalescing of a whole lot of atoms into the appearance of solidity called the body, which you then call myself. So that's kind of what occurs. And again, we could spend many hours discussing the process of the dream itself, the very mechanics of the dream itself. Again, please understand, the one baby is awakening. The dream never really occurred. That is, the perception of the reality of the dream never occurred. The valuing the dream over the dreamer has been a mistake. And the dreaming of the dreamer never separated the dreamer from the power of that one that gives forth the freedom to dream. Understand well then, there is no uniqueness. Everybody's doing the same thing. One child is awakening, and that's all that's going on. That's all that's going on. Something to think about. Can you speak about specialness and holiness in regards to expressing sexuality? First, you might find this somewhat surprising, but many associate sexuality with the body. Seems rather natural, doesn't it? Mm. And yet the body is the last level of the expression of true sexuality. What is sexuality then? It is the very force, the creative force of energy itself. You could say that God, your creator, is pure sexual energy. Since love radiates at such a pure state of being, I won't use the word high because that creates the perception of a hierarchy, a pure state of vibration so filled with ecstatic celebration of its own nature that its only function and desire is to create like unto itself. And what comes forth from that one is Christ. Christ is pure sexual energy. As the dream began to take hold in the mind of the one Son of God, initially as merely a temporary play, but then began to be taken seriously, the fall from grace was the taking of seriously of the dream. As that vibration begins to descend, into more and more into space and time and then into bodies. It still seeks to express itself. But now fear and the belief in bodies has usurped the role of sexuality and perceives it to be, I'll say it has the value for procreating more bodies. That's an ego function. There's no need to procreate more bodies. We've done it long enough. As you find yourself then in a state of consciousness in which at least part of you is still holding value for the body, you will and must feel sexual energy because sexual energy is creative energy. That's all. It is the desire of love to procreate itself, to express itself, to extend itself. Within the body's use of sexuality, the best 
that sexuality can do is to say unto another, I accept you as you are, and I behold your innocence. I elect to allow this body to be utilized in such a way to express the simple truth. No amount of sexuality awakens the sonship. However, it can, if it is used by a mind fully committed as a disciple of Christ, the body can become the context through which love helps to dissolve fears, self-unworthiness, certain perceptions that have settled or crystallized in the mind of your brother or sister. The body cannot be used to get anything. Its only sane purpose is to extend or give. That's all. The purpose then of sexuality in the body is not to seek pleasure, but to allow transformation and healing of illusion. Because the body is the ego's home and sexuality has been usurped by the ego for improper purposes, if you will, sexuality in the body in your world is the place of great power. A great uh, catalyst can come through those energies, but also great risk because it stirs up the most fundamental places in the self where the ego has tried to suppress true creativity and tried to take it over as its own. Sexuality then, ideally, in an awakened state, would be entered into only as the result of prayerful appreciation, not of the other, but of God so that the body relaxes and is surrendered into the awakened mind that then allows the Holy Spirit to inform how another is touched, how another is spoken to, always informed from the perception that the mind is seeing in the other their perfect innocence and is expressing its acceptance its whole acceptance of the other. Not in order to get, not in order to own, not in order to be pleased, not even in order to please, but only to express the innocence of love. Sexuality is God, pure and simple. It gets convoluted in the dream as the mind separates itself and takes on fear, begins to see the body as real, begins to try to use the body in order to get, instead of as a communication device, for allowing the Holy Spirit or the Christ mind to express through it that which brings healing to the sonship. Can sexuality then be used in a sacred way. Of course, a pencil can be used in a sacred way. It is the mind that decides the purpose and the value of all things. To decide to use the sexual energies of the body only as that through which the Holy Spirit can touch another mind and, another mind and heart and let them relax into self-acceptance because they are seen and appreciated for themselves, and not because there's uh, someone trying to get something from them. This is the highest use and value that the body's sexuality can have. And by the way, anything but that, anything but that is a decision against Christ pure and simple. Now, you mentioned the terms specialness and holiness. 
the ego would perceive often in your world that sexuality is what creates the holiness of the joining of two. Hmm? It's upside down thinking. Holiness requires not a movement. It requires a surrendering of illusion within each of two minds. Holy relationship, whether it be having a pizza or having what you call sex, you're always having sex, by the way, even when you're eating a pizza. Hmm? Holiness occurs when any two beings look within themselves, that is, they make the journey within and discover the truth that there is no lack. Then they join not to get, but to create the good, the holy, and the beautiful. That might be a pizza. It might be a retreat center. It might be what you call making love. I don't like the term making, by the way. That's what the ego does. All action, then, is informed from a different place of consciousness, and that is all. Specialness. Specialness is nothing more than the attempt to use relationship with a pizza, with another body, with a brother or sister, to get. That is what makes it special. It doesn't mean, holiness doesn't mean that everybody lives in a house all by themselves and nobody is in a committed relationship. Because in holiness, the Holy Spirit informs the purpose of the relationship moment to moment to moment to moment. If it looks like it's appropriate for two to come together, and live in the same, under the same roof, even as man and wife, hmm? that form is secondary to the content that each mind has awakened to. The form being secondary can be easily embraced and it can be easily released when the content calls for the reshuffling of the cards. Hmm? specialness would hold that no, now that we're together, the form is what matters. The ego loves form, for it believes that form can give it the safety it needs while it tries to survive in its fears. The mind awakened to holiness is fearless and only loves. And so form has become secondary to content. Does that help you in that regard then? Yes. Worthwhile questions, do you think? Mm Mm-hmm. And perhaps if we are most fortunate, some help will come on the answers. In regard then to the latter, we would suggest unto everyone, are you making of the body and sexuality something special? Or can you give even this to the sacred holiness of the purpose the Holy Spirit would give unto it? And value it so highly that you will allow no other use of it to enter into the sphere of your experience that each joining with a friend, with a brother or sister, is a sexual experience. There's an exchange of energy going on. There is life, and life is love, and love is God. Can you bring such presence to sitting across from a friend and smiling while you're eating a pizza so that you know you're having a grand sexual experience? You are in the ecstasy of knowing that life is good goodness is of God. And if you happen to do what is called the uh, groping and the touching and the stroking and the copulating and the uh, panting and the heaving and all of that other thing that happens in a certain tiny form of expression 
of sexual joining that your world has made such a big thing of. Can you bring that presence together so that the two that are joining are joining as though they are the awakened Christ serving no other purpose than to bless the other with acceptance of the other, seeing their perfect innocence, celebrating the innocence of one another without clinging, without possessiveness, without fear of loss. For where minds have joined in love, loss and separation is no longer possible. So, we will then allow this hour to come to a close. We come only then because we love you. We come only to allow that love to inform us and then stepping that down through the matrix of uh, one particular body, mind, and set of vocal cords so that words you can understand with the conscious mind can be uh, brought into your energy field, and yet perhaps used differently, their meanings interpreted differently, to assist you in releasing illusion and allowing correction to come to your mind. That is our sole purpose, because you are the sonship. Because you are the sonship, you are those points of light that are one substance with us. We then are your brothers, sisters, your friends, and we come only because we love you. Do we have a choice? Hardly, for your healing and awakening is ours. Your joining with us in wholeness is the healing of Christ. Therefore, indeed, Peace be with us all, always, whether in your world or ours, within the dimensions of creation, only love is truly occurring. Amen.